Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. From today I shall be starting a new lecture series and this lecture series is on the subject operating systems. So I shall start with the very first that is the introduction of operating systems and moving to the different chapters. So the books that you can refer for this subject, the most popular books are the first one in the list will be Operating System Principles by Tenenbaum and you can refer another book Operating System Concepts by Galvin. Also, you have uh, like uh, the references books available also like William Stallings is there for operating systems. So, in my today's session, I shall be giving you an introduction on operating systems. Later, I will move on to the next that is the process management topics. So, in the introduction part for the operating systems, let us start with the definition for an operating systems. So, what is an operating system? Operating systems is an interface between the interface between the user and the machine. So look at this diagram, it will definitely help you in understanding where exactly uh, why this operating system is used and where exactly is, play, is that particular operating system is lying in this architecture. Normally in a machine at the bottom most level we refer with the hardware. So hardware devices are there certainly you have the CPU, RAM, input output devices that is uh, mainly what do you call the parts of a computer system is CPU, memory and the input output devices. So all these things comes under the hardware that is the bottom bottommost layer. Then comes the next layer is the operating system. Upon that is the application software and then comes the user. User, you and me are the users which are which we, we are using the systems. Now this application software actually we are interacting okay we are using the operating system but definitely with what through the application software. So, software are of two types, application software and system software. This operating system is a system software. It is meant the programs are written only for what? For the functioning of the system. But if a user is writing certain program okay, to carry out a particular task, then it becomes or to make a particular application, it becomes an application software. We have different application softwares here. Okay, we are always using those applications in order to use this that, it, that means in order to use the applications we are using the system and who is helping us in accessing the system in making things so easier comfortable friendly this is the operating system. Let us imagine for some time if there is no operating system then what is that the user has to do. The user has to definitely what interact directly with the hardware. Is it possible for a user to directly interact with the hardware? Definitely not because hardware you have the different components all the users are not familiar and you are not doing just one task you are doing multiple tasks you have different things to do with the system. So for each of the task can you try to manage with the hardware okay even to make the hardware work that time you are going to write a program for every task you try to do you are writing a different program then whether all users are having the talent to write a program and carry out the functionality definitely not for that only this operating system comes into picture at present we have different operating systems in use we have we are using the most popular operating systems all of us uses is the windows operating system then we have the linux solaris mac os all these are the popular operating systems some operating systems are meant for what they are meant basically for convenience User friendly operating system is the one which the user is more comfortable, more convenient in using it. Windows is the most convenient operating system. Many of the users, they feel very comfortable in using a Windows <coughs> operating systems. Similarly, we have the Linux operating system, which is a command based operating system, which has got even the command based. So this particular, whether it is a command based or graphical user interface, let us see the performance see uh, basically why we go for a particular operating system is depending on what is the requirement like few applications they require a maximum throughput few applications wherein we are trying to make use of the uh, task they require only convenience so depending on the requirement you can go for the operating systems so basically for convenience user friendly we go for the windows but Linux is giving a very good throughput, okay. The performance is good if you are using a Linux operating system. So that way depending on your requirement you have to go for or choose the operating system. Now look here, 
this is the basic diagram in order to understand where exactly is this operating system it is acting as an interface between the user and the hardware this is what i just told you now let us see the different functions of the operating system and in order to understand the functions of the operating system the most uh, simpler way is if you are trying to explain operating if you are trying to explain these two points which two points operating system acts as a resource manager operating system acts as an extended machine operating system acts as a resource manager operating system acts as an extended machine now see the explanation for this operating system as a resource manager you can definitely what you will be able to cover all these functionalities of the operating system it is a processor management memory management device management file management and also you have an important activity called as the security aspect now if at all you have to tell about the operating system acting as a resource manager these are the resources processor memory input output devices so operating system is acting as a manager it is trying to allocate these resources to the users so that's why we say it is acting as a resource manager because it allocates the processor to the user suppose in a system let us assume a simple uh, uh, a scenario where in the system you have one single processor but there are multiple users that are trying to use the processor then it is the job of the operating system to allocate this processor so the cpu it will be allocated to user 1 for some duration and then user 2 for some more time user 3 for some more time then it comes back once again to user 1 if there are only three users so it is like on this it is it is like time slicing you can say this resource is like based on time slicing so this is the job for this is the task of the operating system now the users are not at all aware that see when multiple users sit and work on the system uh, because normally in the labs also the students are given the terminals there is one single system the rest of them are terminals so each of the user is performing a task but there is a single processor that is carrying out the job for all the users but no user will feel that he or she is waiting for a response from the system that means so fast is the processing capability of the processor in the system so that is how one single processor can perform what multiple jobs multiple jobs in the system which are as which are carried out by the different users that is completely taken care by the operating system user don't have to do anything for that don't have to worry about that the next uh, important functionality that means we say it is acting as a resource manager with respect to which resource memory memory basically here we are going to talk about the main memory that is the ram so it is the job of the operating system normally what will happen no whenever a user types the program it will be stored in the secondary memory fine whatever programs the user is typing it will be stored in the secondary memory but for the purpose of execution it will be loaded into the main memory so here when it is loaded into the main memory which we call it as a ram it is the job of the operating system to bring a particular process now here there are different processes p1 p2 p3 time being i am just you can uh, remember you can call it as process later i'll be telling you exactly what is the meaning of a process it is simply in simpler words you can say that there are different programs that are present here in the secondary memory now it is the job of the operating system to bring these programs to the main memory for execution so what will happen now the the this particular uh, uh, size of the main memory is limited whereas the size of what the size of the secondary memory is huge many programs can reside at a time but for execution it is the job of the operating system to bring the processes that can be accommodated in the main memory for execution and how this multiple jobs are carried out at the same time is suppose if p1 p2 and uh, p3 are there in the ram for execution each one is on turn getting the processor for execution at any point of time there is a possibility that p3 will go for some input request input device request or output device uh, device request so when it request for an input output operation it has nothing to do with the cpu 
So that particular time wherein the P3 was used in order to process by the CPU, the operating system sees that P4 will come here and P3 will be moved into the secondary memory. Until it finishes the job of input-output request, P4 will be here and the processor will try to execute P4. So here also the user is not aware of this. Definitely it is the operating system that is managing what the memory. So these are these points I am just giving you an overview. Very briefly, when I teach the detailed topics on processor management, uh, memory management, you will be learning more, uh, this one, you will be getting more information in detail, you will be getting the clear concept of how this operating system manages the memory. So we say basically in simpler words, the swap in and swap out. Swap in and swap out is taken care by the operating system. Similar is the case with the device management. If there is one single printer that is connected to a system and multiple users are trying to print, then it is the job of the to allocate the device, whether it is a printer or scanner or any other device, it will allocate to the user, then it will deallocate from the user. So this allocation and deallocation, whether it is a process, it gets allocated to the processor, deallocated from the processor. Whether it is uh, for the resource memory, it is the memory is allocated to a process and deallocated from a process similarly device also then you have the files files are basically stored in the what in directories so the operating system has to take care of what the complete directory structure the information of the files the size of the file the permissions that are given to the file so all these things comes uh, under one name called as file system so it is the job of the operating system to completely manage what files so we say this file management is also an important function of the operating system and another activity that is there is with respect to the security so every one of us want our systems to be secured so we store some important informations in our system so when we are not there if some other person comes and try to access the system and tries to get the information then it is not right that's the reason the operating system also takes care of this aspect what is that security by providing what the user can always have the username and the password so for the first time the user will try to create a username and password and that will be saved in the system if at all some unauthorized users tries to come and try to type the password definitely the system will try to match the password that is typed by from by the user that is the new user with the one that is saved in the system if it doesn't match it is not going to give the access to the system so this way our systems are safe our information is safe and the security is given not only to the user for the system later when you come to know regarding the processes even there should when the different processes are getting executed okay here if you see the different processes that are getting executed these processes will have an address space each process will have an address space so there is no possibility for any process to cross its boundary and try to access any other location from other process address space so that is called as in uh, normally we call it as protection there so that care is also taken care uh, that care is also done by the operating systems so that's why we say these are the different resources and this is an important activity security which is carried out carried out by the operating system and we call it as what acting as a resource manager operating system acts as an extended machine so why these two lines are uh, two sentences are mentioned is normally uh, in one of the textbook the, and also I have seen some previous question papers where they ask justify these two statements uh, operating system acts as a resource manager operating system acts as an extended machine so that time you are going to give complete explanation how the operating system is managing these different resources and operating system acts as an extended machine so machine once you say you come to this bottom most layer here in this diagram it is the hardware now suppose if this operating system is not there then the users are supposed uh, are required to access the hardware which is highly difficult for all the users to operate the hardware this is like some ugly interface the operating system is converting this ugly interface into a beautiful interface for a user to access the system for a while you just imagine if this is not there the operate uh, user have to interact with the hardware now one example if at all you if i have to give you let us we know that in our institutions or in apartments and all you have the lift let us assume that there is no uh, switch button that is uh, to make the lift go 
to the top floors or to the bottom floors normally it is easy now presently as soon as we enter into the lift we see those numbers there first floor 1 2 3 we press it and the lift takes us to those floors now suppose if those things are not there because that is what we are make our life is made easier with this system we are made only to press this button okay press that those buttons that are present in the lift those buttons are not there and the hardware the wires everything is shown there then what each user has to do each person has to see okay in order to make uh, myself move to the top floor or second floor i have to connect this wire to that wire then only it will take it the next time when he wants to go down he has to remember okay this is this is not the wire i have to make use of another wire so each user just imagine whether it is possible for all the users to learn that particular hardware to operate and if somebody is see the operating system allocates the resource and deallocates also somebody is just connecting that wire to move to some particular floor and not releasing it that means that person is holding the lift not allowing other users to access that lift so that means it is not getting deallocated from that user so this is just one example you can see around you several examples such uh, uh, of of this kind wherein this operating system is making our job very simple very easier and very convenient so that is the need for the operating system so that's why i'm saying it acts as an extended machine this machine is what is as though the user is operating with the machine but not really it is through the operating system this is all about the introduction to operating systems hope this session is useful to you all thank you bye bye take care